I'm George. I work as a solutions architect for Bernard Schulte Ship Management. Um, been working with, with SharePoint Framework for the past uh, two, two and a half years, three years, and SharePoint uh, 2013 before that. Uh, so today we'll be seeing how to create a Teams tab where we're using SPFX, ReactJS, and Material UI with a little bit of Google Maps. So just closing the image here, and this is a solution working within uh, Teams. Uh, so uh, what do we have here? This is a normal um, normal team, nothing special about it. Just uh, we have this uh, uh, this web part here. It loads from a SharePoint list and it gets all the different locations and then it displays it here on on the right. And uh, obviously it allows the admin to see this manage trainees uh, button. If we look through another user's perspective that is not an admin, the button is not there, just so that you get an idea. And uh, yeah, I can just show you uh, how we get about doing this. Going with uh, the script. So you start off normally uh, using uh, the PNP uh, SPFX uh, setup because you, for Material UI, you need to have um, TypeScript 3 and up. So I'm using 3.5 in this case. And uh, first things that you need to do is you go into, well, once obviously it's, it's done scaffolding and provision and so on. Hey, George, you, sorry to interrupt you. Could you increase your font size? Could you zoom in just uh, once uh, or twice? Yes, I think it's, uh, It'll just, show up a little bit better in the video. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. So yeah, you go into the the manifest JSON file. First things first for a Teams tab to be supported is in here. Just adding this Teams tab will make it uh, allowed to be installed on, on Teams. The rest of the information just stays as it is. Um, nothing, uh, nothing more special on this page. Then the the other thing that we need to set up going into the t uh, TypeScript file is uh, we need to install uh, to import um, this uh, this here, the Microsoft Teams JS uh, component because this gives us the context, and this comes in very handy uh, when it comes to know what team you're on and what permissions are the which is used now for my managing trainees uh, button. And um, yeah, so adding this you, you need to have the, the, the just define it here, push it in and make sure that you're giving it for the react file to to read the data. And uh, then going to the TypeScript, uh, the yeah, the Java the react file, sorry. Um, just uh, I'm importing in my uh, my material UI and the Google Maps. I'm just using React Google Maps in this case, and the material UI just using the the button and the width styles. Uh, obviously, material UI needs some theming uh, capabilities here. And uh, yeah, so what I'm doing is uh, I do have my uh, my uh, on init function here that says that defines the setup of the page. Right now, I have the um, I'm putting in um, manually the the, uh, the team that I wanted to fetch the information from because the list is sitting on on uh, a SharePoint team. Uh, so I'm putting it here directly, but it could have taken it from the properties or it to make it a reusable component or it could take the current page of uh, that the team is w working on. If this was a, let's say, like the documents that always exists on a, on a SharePoint site, it could have taken that out directly instead of me putting the the string here. So I'm just fetching the the map, and just uh, some Go Maps uh, things here. Obviously the API, and this is uh, the part as well that gives us the. Uh, the user role. So this is basically checking to see from the team context, which is given by the props. And first is checking if it exists. And once it exists, then it shows the user role. And if the user role is an admin, which is zero, then it shows the button. And obviously, then if it shows a button, it just loads a function that would then load the 
uh, the admin page. And I realized that I forgot to show that part. So um, jumping back onto browser, if I am an admin and I click this button, it will take me to the site. It's very easy to, uh, right now it's provisioned to be used through uh, SharePoint lists. It doesn't have to be this way. You could put the entire CRUD within the teams. It's just, I thought for this example, we'll just keep it like this. Uh, I'll just put a trainee, uh, I'll add, and I'll just use the location. So I'll just choose Cyprus for the sake of it. And if I go back on my teams and refresh it, the antis is here, as you can see. And if I click on the pin here, it shows as well. And let's say if I wanna move a trainee, change location, I just edit from my list here. Just drop down, select Greece, and it's saved. And if I go back on my team here, and Glant is moved here. So that's how you, the list gets updated. So next part is we want to package the solution and to package it, there is uh, from the uh, Microsoft documentation, there is a way to uh, the sample for this manifest file. Uh, this is needed in order for Teams to be, uh, well, I guess to, uh, to have it deployed on Teams. So there's a sample of this uh, manifest file. You just need to pay attention to on, uh, let's put a, G, a new GUID here. Make sure like the version is still the same as the packages solution. And what is important here is uh, the configuration URL, which is basically taking it uh, from a specific uh, team. And obviously some icons here need to happen. And, um, so yeah, that's for the manifest file. So you do run a normal um, gulp uh, uh, build bundle package solution and so on. It does give you an SP, uh, SP package file. And if I just bring this up. It does give you the, uh, and I didn't build this one, anyway. sorry. So it does give you a package file, SharePoint package file, and then you do bring it here as uh, normal. You upload it, but the first time you do it, it'll ask you to deploy, it will deploy it as a SharePoint application. And then to make it available for uh, Teams, you need to press this button to then allow you to, to see it within Teams to install it onto your team. And the second time you do it, it will say fail to deploy. It does it. it. It only needs one time uh, to do it. And uh, the other thing, you need to be a tenant admin for this. Uh, being just a SharePoint admin does not allow you to uh, to install it properly. That's a little uh, thing to know. And then afterwards, once all those steps are done, we can find it here. If I browse for more apps, you can see here build for SP Shark, which is the tenant that I'm working on right now. And you can find it here once you uh, install it, add it to a team. And uh, well, if the team, if I had an extra team here, it would show, oh, there it is. So if I want to install it there, I'll consider up on a team. Uh, yes, however, one more thing, the, in order to, for the application to work, you need to have it installed on the site as well. Uh, you need to have it on Teams as uh, on your SharePoint site here. Otherwise, Teams will try to load the application and it'll say, I, I don't have anything to read because the information is not here. You need to go normally, uh, install an app, and then select it and get it here. And if you are updating your application, you need to again do the same thing. Uh, change it within the, the apps, uh, check it in, go into the site contents of the team, and then click the details and get the latest version. And this will update uh, uh, the, the web part within Teams. And here, uh, if you had any reusable controls that you wanted to use here, you could just put it here. Obviously, description field, I'm not using it for anything, but 
you could have had like a, a list that you want the data to come from or um, I don't know, like uh, other files or importing the users from here, perhaps it, it's entirely up to you, but the capabilities are here. You do, get, you do have access to the properties. And uh, I think that's it. I'm seeing the time as well. Uh, do we have any questions? Thanks, George. Um, just a comment on the on the <clears throat> on installing the the requirement of installing and everything else. There's a few different options over there. So if you do deploy the web part as a tenant scope deployed web part, then you don't need the explicitly that to be installed on a site. So there's a few different options here, um, but you're absolutely correct. If you if you want to have the web part only exposed to these teams and and uh, then you have to explicitly install this uh, to the site and then it wouldn't be available and visible uh, on other areas so few things and i would i will need to definitely double check our documentation that it's 100 percent up to date on the different options and and uh, scenarios but cool uh, looking thing just out of curiosity um just just obviously uh, because i'm a microsoft guy why did you choose to use google uh the, the styling why not is that uh, uh, <laughs> why material UI? Uh, exactly. I just thought um, it's a good question. I have been using it uh, before, and uh, I kind of like the being alternative sometimes uh, yep. on on some like giving a different look because if people look so, like something and it looks like SharePoint, they might not like it. But if it looks a little bit different, oh, you did something here. <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's, the, that seems to be the culture in my company. Yeah, I I don't think you're the only one, so it makes perfect sense. But and and it, and it this actually the demo demonstrates uh, nicely at that it doesn't matter what React components or things you want to use, everything works in in the context of uh, SharePoint framework. So up to you. How do we want to implement things? Absolutely. Mm -hmm.